Um, my husband and I pastor a church in Cardiff, Freedom Church, and also I'm director of Porn Scars, which is um, an organization that's generating activity across the UK in um, delivering conferences to churches to raise awareness of this issue. And we've got some incredible partners that are partnering with us on this. So I'm going to highlight three things to you during this 15 minutes. One, why? Two, how? And three, what? Why is it wrong? Why is pornography wrong? How have we got here? And what are we going to be doing about it? And that, the emphasis on we. We are the hope of the world. If you're sitting here today and you're a Christian, you are the hope of the world. So why is it wrong? It's a sexual sin. Jesus says, don't commit adultery. And then he went on to say, but I tell anyone that looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery in their heart. It is a sin. We could stop there and say it's wrong because it's a sin. But then it goes on. It's addictive. There are many, many researches showing now how addictive pornography is. And once you start looking at it, it becomes more and more and more until you're completely hooked. It leads to other sins. So what we've got now, porn in our country, now, probably if you'd looked at porn five, ten years ago, it would be now, it's migrated into the MTV um, scene, but porn now is becoming more and more aggressive, and what we're looking at is rape online in a whole range of websites, so it's addictive, it's degrading to women, we have an increasing amount of research that's showing us the intrinsic link between pornography and trafficking, so trafficked women coming into this country and being forced to make porn films. So actually when you're watching on screen, you're watching women who are doing sexual acts and men who are doing sexual acts, some of them are not a chosen profession. They're not there because they want to be there, they're made, be made to be there. It's harmful to your relationship with your current or future spouse. Porn becomes a substitute for sexual intimacy with your spouse. It does. And I've heard story after story after story of marriages that are being destroyed by this issue in our society. It leads to other sins, aggression, violence, rape we are seeing on the media all the time, children on children who are committing sexual offenses as a result of watching pornography online. It desensitizes your very soul. So it's like a shot of anesthetic into your soul, which desensitizes you from the Holy Spirit and distances you from God himself. And it distorts sex. So can we agree it's not good? Yes. Okay. So how? How have we got here? You are the first generation of young people growing up to the whole area of sexting, Facebook. So we've got Facebook pages where girls are provocatively putting photographs of themselves on there. We have um, MSN orgies going on. And if you want to know more about that, I'll talk to you about that another time. Smartphones, you've got porn on your pocket. It's easy, it's accessible, it's addictive, and it's anonymous. You can do it wherever you want, whenever you want, with whoever you want. And you can't no longer protect children from... So previously, you may have a home computer and you'd have it in your lounge, so your mum was looking over your shoulder. You don't do that anymore. Porn's in your pocket on a regular basis. I um, taught sex education in schools for a number of years, and one teacher was telling me that she was talking about pornography in the classroom, and she was talking about, you know, showing pictures on a screen of women and men, normal women and men who were naked, and these lads in the classroom started sniggering and started laughing, and she's like, okay, so what's the issue? And they're like, oh, that's so gross, all that pubic hair on that woman, and she's like, yeah, that's quite normal. No, it's not normal. None of the women on the porn films have pubic hair like that. That is disgusting. And she said to them, well, do your penises look like the guys who you watch on the porn films? No. Basically, we are growing up with a generation who are seeing sex falsely. It's not true sex. It's not intimate sex. It's disgusting and it's degrading. There's a lie pervading this generation about sex and sexuality, and you are the hope. You are the ones that are going to make a difference. This thief is coming to steal, kill, and destroy. This porn is coming to destroy your identity, your lives, and your future. And if it's not you, it will be a colleague, it'll be a friend, it'll be a person that you know, because it's everywhere. 
You need to be equipped to stand up and fight this enemy. You may be thinking you're a David and that Goliath ain't coming down. It is coming down because you are fully equipped with the armor of God and the word of God to take this giant down. You, you need to be standing and you need to be saying, just like Ruth was saying this morning, we need to resolve, and I'm going to talk a little bit about that in a moment, to say, no, thief, you're not having me. You're not having my friends. You're not having my youth group. You're not having my church. You're not having my pastor. I'm going to stand and I'm going to say, no, enough is enough. The average age of first watching pornography is 11 years old. The average age. So when we have an average age, year fives and year sixes are having links sent to them on their smartphones or through their Facebook pages, and they are seeing this type of stuff. One in four pastors are watching porn on a regular basis. This is not just a young person's issue. This is a global issue right across the generations. Between 50 and 70% of 16 to 8-year-olds have hard pornography, hardcore pornography on their phones that are accessible at any point. And some of you are sitting there going, I know, because it's me. But God is the hope. And he's going to come today and he wants to restore you. He's not coming with a judgment, just like um, Rob has said. He's coming with grace. He's coming with love. He's coming with forgiveness. So what can we do about it? We need to clean up the church. The church is the bride of Christ. When the bride of Christ is presented to him, Jesus, we don't want a spotty. We don't want her with blemishes. We want her presented as beautiful. And my heart is to present the bride of Christ, the church, to Jesus as stunning. And I've got a passion to clean her up and present her beautifully. Daniel 1. In Daniel 1, Nebuchadnezzar was the king of Babylon. And he was the, he's, he's the dodgy king. And he said he wanted to take over Jerusalem. So he said to his little minions, he said, I'll tell you what, those Israelite men, those Israelite men that are so cool and rich and they be, belong to royalty and they're really clever and they're so good looking. Those are the ones, girls, that you would be looking at in church. They are so hot. I want you to bring them into the Babylonian culture and I want to indoctrinate them. I want to teach them. I want to teach them the language. I want to teach them the literature of what it is to be a Babylonian. And Daniel's like, no. You can bring me into this culture, but you cannot make me bow down to this culture. You may be a part of this culture, but you can stand up against this sexualized culture. So Daniel and his mates, they resolved, and again, just echoing what Ruth said earlier, they resolved to stand. It says in Daniel 1 that he resolved to stand. He'd made a decision. He had resolved to stand and stand up for the kingdom that he was fighting for. Nebuchadnezzar's plan was to teach them the language and the literature of the Babylonians. Today's language is the language of sex. Society is trying to teach you as young people sex talks and sex sells. It's everywhere. Advertising, MTV, magazines, internet, it is everywhere. You are being taught the language of sex. Not godly sex, but porn and ungodly sex. We can't hide away from this culture. We have to learn to resolve and stand up in it and make a difference and speak out about it. So let's look at Daniel. He was cool. He was good looking. He was great. He resolved himself not to defile himself, and he made a decision, I'll not be absorbed by this culture. It took four men, four men that resolved, Daniel and his three mates, who said, no, this far and no further. Have I got four people here today that will stick there, will stand up and say, I am resolving to stand in my generation against this. If you do, stand up. If I got four, we can change a nation. If I've got eight, we can significantly damage the world. Seriously, guys, we can do it. I have such a vision from God that we as the church, as we clean ourselves up, we can make a difference. Thank you. If you sit down, I think I've got a few more minutes just to finish off. 
What Daniel did was he rose up in his generation. He made it through that fiery furnace. He was not eaten by the lions because he roared louder than them. He roared louder than the lions. He resolved. He rose up and he roared. King Nebuchadnezzar made a decree in the end that the whole nation should bow down to Daniel's God. That's what I want. I want this nation, I want this culture to say, the church have got it right. They've got it right. God's standards are correct. They're right. And I want decisions to be made at government level where laws come into place to say that this is right. If you've been watching porn, it's never too late to draw a line in the sand and saying, this far and no further. There's no condemnation coming from this platform today. But as George said this morning, there is an end in grace. You can stand today and you can say, do you know what, God? I know. I've been there. I've watched it. Those images are bedded into my brain and I can't get rid of them, but I want to get rid of them. Please forgive me and help me, God. If you haven't watched porn, great. Don't start. So for those of you that have much porn, you can resolve, you can rise, and you can roar. And for those of you that have, you've got a fourth R. You can resolve today, you can be restored, and then you rise, and then you roar. There is restoration in the house today. What would happen if today, Wales and Australia, the last minute... Australia are 20, and Wales are 18, and George North scores the try. What would you do? What would you do? Yes! Come on! That's the passion that we need for righteousness in our generation. That is what it's going to take, that you've got to stand up and you've got to roar louder than the culture that's roaring at you. And you can do it. So after three, you're going to do it. If you're going to struggle with this, just think of George North. Just think George North. If you can shout for rugby, you can shout for Jesus. So after three, one, you're going to roar. Two, three. Yes! Come on. And as we roar, we'll make a noise. And people will see the difference. Darkness is not the problem. It's the absence of the brightness of the light in us. So I'm just going to leave you with a few questions. So what do I do? I can resolve. I can stand. I can say no more. I can rise up and respond. But how? Maybe you could ask your youth worker. Can we talk about this in our youth group? Maybe you could have conversations with your senior pastor and say, we need to talk about this in church. Maybe if you're a senior pastor here, you need to be asking your leaders, are they watching porn? Because some of them will be. And then you need to offer support and help to those marriages that are failing. Young people, maybe you need to stand up, just like Ruth did when she knocked on that door. That took some boldness and guts. Maybe when you're showed a link or sent a link on Facebook, you say, no, I'm not watching that. No, I'm not having that. No, I'm resolving to stand. I don't want anything to do with that. And the other thing you can do is Porn Scars is going to be delivering a conference in Cardiff, which is fantastic, with some incredible speakers. And we'll be able to go into a lot more detail how we can resource you as churches, resource you as youth groups. We've got some incredible partners. Ian Henderson, at the moment, he's an incredible guy. And if I give you one website to look at now, look at Naked Truth. Com. He is producing some fantastic resources um, that, that will equip you as youth leaders and churches. Guys, thank you for listening. Thank you for responding. You've been incredible. And I just want to say, let's, let's keep on rising. Let's keep on responding. Let's keep on roaring in the face of this culture that we're in. Thank you. <laughs>